Coming up on Let's Get to the Point. We were wondering if you experienced any roadblocks, discriminations, or prejudices during your travels or while using your travel hacks. Most of all, I experienced the inequalities more here traveling in the U.S. than overseas. You know, it's very common for me to be in line at the Premier Access line for an airline to check in and for them to tell me, hey, this is a first class line or the Premier Access line or whatever they call it. And I'm like, yeah, I know, you know, I know who I am. And later. Final Instagram question here. Share how the five of us got together. So I, I got a message from. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you're going to have to watch this episode next week. It was important to me that we have a diverse team because it's unlike anything out there right now. How lucky and fortunate I am to have all of you here with me. So thank you so much for doing this show. Now, let's get to the points. From passion for points, it's Serena. From points to travel expert, it's Keho Lani. From travel sergeant, it's Miguel. From Nicole's travel tips, it's Nicole. And from seat to a suite, it's Mitch Shannon. Hello and welcome to Let's Get to the Points, audio and video podcast, bringing you the very best in tips and tricks in the world of miles, points, and travel. I'm your host, Mitch Shannon, along with my fantastic co-hosts, who are the very best Instagram social media content creators in all things points, miles, and travel. First up, from Passion for Points, it's Serena. Hi. From Points to Travel Expert, it's Kay Halani. Aloha, my Coco. From Travel Sergeant, it's Miguel. Hello. And from Nicole's Travel Tips, it's Nicole. Hi. Please hit the like button and make sure you subscribe now to our podcast wherever you watch or listen. The video and audio versions are on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify at Let's Get to the Points. Also, make sure to connect with us via our social media accounts. Let's do it. Let's get to the points. Hi, guys. So I wanted to read a nice review that we got from Annie at Travel Hacking Kids. And she writes, love checking in each week and hearing what the best travel hackers are working on and planning. Hearing five different people's recommendations helps so much because everyone thinks differently. Can't wait for next week. So thank you, Annie, for that review. We really appreciate it. And that's one of the goals of this channel is to present our five different views and hopefully you can identify with one or more of us. And I think, Nicole, you wanted to read a review too? Yes, we have a review from Choose to Explore. Choose says, super excited to follow this journey. You guys all inspire us to have great tips, to learn, and to share. Love the diversity in the group as well, and cannot wait for more of you guys. So thanks, Chu. It's always great to hear feedback like that. So let's go ahead and get started. So I wanted to talk about passports because we're, be, we're doing a trip to Tokyo and Seoul this summer. Actually, next month, my wife and my daughter and I. And my daughter's passport is going to expire in a couple weeks. So the reason why we couldn't send her passport for renewal earlier with enough time to get it back in time for the trip is because we were doing trips to Mexico for a dress that we we're getting for her. She had to go back for fittings back and forth. So my plan, and I don't know if it's going to work yet, right, is to plan another trip before our Tokyo trip to Mexico so I could get an expedited appointment. So if you don't want to renew it, aside from renewing it by mail, you could also get an urgent appointment. But in order to for you to get an appointment, you have to be within 14 days of traveling internationally. So if you have a trip in the next two weeks, you should be able to get an appointment so you could renew it on the spot. Now, if you already sent your passport in for renewal, your trip has to be within five days. Now, to get this appointment, it's not easy because you have to call a 1-800 number. And when I try to get it, I, I call lots of times and they couldn't even take my call because they were so busy. So I kept calling back, calling back. My plan B for this was going to be to contact my member of Congress. So if you contact your member of Congress, they should be able to help you try to get an appointment with them. You submit your information to their district office and they could try to get an appointment for you. But by the time they got back to me the next day, I had already scheduled my appointment. So I have my appointment for this week. And what I did for to prove that I was going to travel is that I got a flight using American Airline miles that is fully refundable. So my plan is to get the passport. And if I can't make my trip that I planned, then I can just cancel to get my miles back, but I'll have my passport. I love that idea. I, I love it so much. This happened to us last year where I had to get a passport for my son and literally getting stuff together and realize it's about to expire. And so we had to do the expedited process. It's, it, it's tedious, but 
I love your idea of planning a trip just to get the ball rolling. Yeah, so I also have to renew my daughter's passport too. And we're going to do it in mid-June. And it's hard getting a passport appointment in my area. I had to look every morning for appointments to pop up. And I had to check every day and finally found a day that actually works. So it's not easy. I recommend like trying to plan in advance for sure. Yeah. And the appointments, you know, that are available within the next two weeks of, of your travel date aren't necessarily at your city. There's people that have to travel to a different city just to get that appointment. So I've heard that in Hawaii, you can make an appointment at the post office and go in there to get your passport. So our daughter needed the passport. She didn't follow through with it. But when I looked at the appointment times, there were a lot of slots on Maui. And I've heard reports that you can get the passport really quickly if you do it in Hawaii. What a great opportunity to go to Hawaii. <laughs> I need a little more proof of that to try, try it ourselves. But that's what I've heard. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, in one of the future episodes, I'll let you guys know how it went, if if my plan worked out or if I really had to take the international trip. Uh, what did you have for us this week, Nicole? All right, so I want to talk about travel fatigue. So when I was younger, I wanted to live the life of Samantha Brown. I'm not sure if you guys know who that was. She was on TLC and she just moved around the world, stayed in fancy hotels and somebody paid for it. So here I am thinking that's the life I'm going to give my family. So we had just come back from DC and school's about to end. And I planned a trip to Panama and we were at breakfast talking about it. And I don't even know why I cared about their opinion, but I was like, do you guys really want to go to Panama? They looked at each other and then they looked at me and then they were like, we don't really want to go. And they were like, we just want to stay home and hang out with our friends. So it looks all great on Instagram. Everyone's traveling. It seems like everything is, you know, kosher, but sometimes it takes a toll on the kids more than it takes a toll on us as adults. So I had to really reevaluate. I mean, I would love to go to Panama, but I'm not going to go and drag them. It's just going to make the, you know, the vacation a lot harder than it needed to be. So luckily I booked most of it with points and refundable hotels. So I was able to get all my money back for the state that we were planning. So that is definitely a win for being able to book refundable tickets and using points and miles for different reservations. But you know what? It worked out perfectly because literally a, what, a week after we canceled, the New Zealand deal popped up. So it was great. So Mitch, tell us what you have. Yeah, so I think all of us know about this, but I just want to make sure our listeners and viewers know what time of the year it is again. And I feel it's really important that we wave those reminder flags now for all of us that hold the American Express Platinum card, the personal one, and the business card as well, because it's the buy yearly credit time. So you're going to find the $50 Saks credit on the personal card and the $200 Dell credit on the business card. There's so many ways to use these credits, and it's best to use them through a shopping cashback portal if you're going to be making a purchase to stack the savings. I know Kay Halani and Nicole are really good at the portals. A tip that I do and I learn from them is I usually go into the store. The first part of the year, I'll buy a Saks gift card for $50. Normally, the conditions say you're not allowed to do that, but I've never really had a problem with this. And then when July 1st rolls around, I combine that gift card and I use the new credit. And then I go through a shopping portal and I pick up some of my favorite Aesop products that they sell online. And that's normally what I do. So you're going to need to figure out how you want to use your credits. But this is your reminder now to use those credits in case something comes up, especially if you're going to make like a regular purchase on Saks.com. I've seen so many people post and I've seen this so many times. My order is on back order and it's not going to ship for three weeks. Well, your credit's not going to count because if it ships after July 1st, they're not going to go back and make that retroactive. So don't lose that credit. If you're holding the business platinum card, the Dell credits, make sure you go through the MX offer selection that K. Helani talked about in our past shows and see if you can get that 10% off cashback portal to stack it with that as well. And it's almost like a three-way stack if you add the Amex offer, the $200 offer, and then you use Rakuten that Nicole mentioned as well. And sometimes you'll see that at 10% as well. So it's always a good reminder to use these credits as soon as you see them. There's also some credits that you'll find on the Chase cards. Our good friend Max Miles points, and he made a great video about those credits for GoPuff, the $10 monthly credit, and how he uses those every month as well. So guys, credits 
Amex, it's coming due. We're waving the flag now. Use these credits, use these credits, use these credits. I'm so happy you mentioned the GoPuff credit because I think it was maybe two weeks ago, I found out that the no annual fee business ink cards also have that $10 credit. And I have, let's just say quite a few of them. So I think in our household, we have about 10 credits for GoPuff. So that's a lot of snacks that my kids can get. So make sure you take advantage of those GoPuff credit. And someone shared with me. So when I first started, one of the issues was I was paying a delivery fee for each one. And so so the hack that she showed me, why not frugal? She's like, use one of the cards and pay for the monthly membership for GoPuff. I don't have the pickup option here. So it's $7.99. But because of that $7.99 on every other order, I don't have to pay delivery fee. I just use a different card. So we are able to get the credits that way. So try that out. I don't know about you guys, but I sometimes I feel like these credits or these coupons are like a big headache to keep track of do you guys got like any tips on how you use them or how do you feel about that yeah i don't like keeping track of all these credits i know there's a few apps out there the only credits that i use monthly for sure are the amex gold cards so that i use grubhub and the uber eats that's about it compare the time that you're spending using these credits like if you're spending two hours a day doing it you're not getting much value out of it for ten dollars well here's another hack that i use so since i have two teenagers i let them pick it i'm like i'm going to the supermarket to buy a essentials. If you want the snacks, you need to manage this and don't spend over $13 per order because that's our minimum order. And if I get a credit over 13, no snacks next month. Just add it like you do, Nicole, it becomes really easy and quick for you to do. So it's well worth your time getting those things. Yeah, I agree as well. Um, Serena, I think you're going to talk about KLM and how to book a stopover. I am. So last fall, Air France and KLM announced that they will allow free stopovers on award bookings. So you could get a free stopover in Paris or Amsterdam and stay there any number of days up to a year and then move on to your next destination. But the big problem with this is not a lot of people have been able to successfully book it because you have to speak it to an agent and not all agents know how to book this and there's a lot of misinformation out there so how this is supposed to work is for example let's say one way in business class san francisco to paris is eighty thousand miles from Paris to Nairobi is 65,000 miles. Instead of costing a total of 145,000 miles, if there's a free stopover, the total should be only 95,000 miles, which is from San Francisco to Nairobi. So I spoke to many reps about this, trying to book it, and none of them knew how to book it. So what did I do? I sent a message on LinkedIn to the head of Flying Blue because he's the guy who announced it in the first place. And I explained to him that I was having trouble booking it and he didn't reply back, but I got a call from a supervisor from the Prague office and he was able to help me. I ended up not booking it because my plans ended up changing, but here are some tips for you if you decide to book one of these award tickets with the free stopover. So stopovers seem to only be allowed in either Paris on Air France or in Amsterdam on KLM. The entire trip should be on the same metal. So all legs need to be on Air France or all legs need to be on KLM. And then for now, no partner awards are allowed, but they might be in the future. As with all things in this game, if you are told something on the phone that doesn't make sense, then hucka, which means hang up, call again. You could ask to speak to a supervisor if you're having trouble with the rep that you're speaking with. And then you want to tell the rep to run it in manual mode. That's like a key word who successfully are able to book it. And then the supervisor in the Prague office, he gave me a tip. You can send a Twitter message to Air France, ask them to price out your award booking, then ask for a callback from a supervisor to verify your booking. And then you should get a call from someone who is a supervisor who can make sure that your award ticket was booked correctly with the free stopover. So there are some reported cases of people successfully booking this even to Africa. So if you have the stomach for it, you might want to look at this and call Flying Blue to see if they can book this for you. Otherwise, wait a little bit and maybe they'll be able to make it available online for booking sometime in the future. 
I love a free stopover. I like Air Canada's policy, for stopover policy, because it doesn't have to be at a hub and it could be with different carries and stuff. But it's still nice if you're going to book something with Air France or KLM, it's nice to have that option to extend a few days, especially if you're going somewhere that far to reset there in Europe for a day or two and then continue on your trip. Yeah, I agree. Alaska is also a good one with free stopovers. That one you can book online and I hear it's easier to do. Hopefully more airlines can incorporate free stopovers for us. I think we could do a whole show on all the different stopover programs because there's a lot that offer them. Even with cash bookings, what I've done before when I'm looking at Google Flights, if the carrier is British Airways and I'm going, say, Phoenix to London to Rome, I can do a multi-city booking instead of round trip and add my own stopover on my own in London and messing around with the dates, it prices out similar to, you know, to a similar price. So Michelle from FreeFam Travel, she did the most awesome Hawaii trip, Hawaii, California, over to England. She bought it on Alaska. It was an awesome deal that she got. Yeah, I saw that one too from Michelle. That's genius because what she did, she broke up the two legs. So basically she was coming home from Hawaii and then a few months later, she traveled to Europe. So that's another strategy to use a stopover. Use it for two different trips. Especially if you can time this with one of those transfer bonuses from Amex to KLM or Flying Blue, that or one of those Nicole and Kehalani have talked about. It's actually a good deal. Yeah, you're right, Mitch. So the transfer bonuses, that makes it a great deal. Kehalani, what do you have for us this week? Great website that helps you to search for flights really quickly, find out how much these flights cost. It's called Seats.Aero. Now, Miguel has mentioned this on his Instagram a few times, and he is an expert in utilizing this site. This site has a new feature called a Q-Suites Finder. Q-Suites is one of, if not the best business class seat in the world. I recommend everyone to try it out because it is an experience that you will never forget, especially going into the lounge. If you go onto seats.aero, you're going to find their Qatar Q-Suites Finder, and you're going to see a drop down menu. And from this drop down menu, you can choose North America to anywhere in the world, and you choose where you want to fly from using the Q Suites. And then there's going to be a whole list of different flights available, and you're going to see the prices for those flights. So you can see flights from JFK to Doha, from Houston to Doha, Philadelphia to Doha, Chicago to Doha. Uh, these are all on American Airlines as well. It'll show you which airlines you can buy these flights at with your points or miles. And for example, most of those go for 70,000 points. Then you can go to the website that seats.aero suggests and go ahead and purchase your ticket. I really like that Q Suites Finder because you might have a time that you want to take a trip. Say you want to take a trip in October. And if you're willing to go from any of the, I think there's maybe 13 U.S. airports that service uh, Qatar Airways, you can just search from the entire continent. So you don't, even though you can search this on American Airlines or you know other websites, this allows you to book all at once from entire North America, even Montreal. So you can just search for your dates where Qatar flies to Doha and book it that way. So this is really a time saver in searching for award availability. As it gives the list of dates available, it's easy to pair that up if you're looking for a special hotel. So you can mix and match it right away while you're searching. You don't have to take a long time of search on the website and go back and look. So it's really convenient. I love Seats.Aero. I love the feature where you can search for flights plus or minus seven days within your desired date. And this is how we found one of our flights coming back from Europe for the summer. And the, the information is usually accurate. They told us there were seven seats when we went on the website, there were seven seats available. That's a great feature and it's a great search website. All right, I love it all. All right, thanks everyone. It's time to move things along and we're gonna get to our weekly recap right now. Okay, it's time for our weekly recap. We're always busy booking trips and learning insider lessons. And this is the segment where we share those stories with you. So we're gonna start with Kay Haulani and you're gonna talk about one of my favorite things with Hyatt and it's these sweet awards, right? Yes. We recently hit 50 nights with Hyatt, and so we're going to get two sweet upgrade awards. Some other things that have happened with us with Hyatt is I needed to let a category one to seven award expire because I wasn't able to use it in time. And after it expired, I contacted Hyatt and I received 20,000 points for that. Another thing that happened just this week, a few days ago, 
is we earned another Hyatt Brand Explorer Award. It is our 10th brand that we visited. So I expect that award to be in our account by this week. Okay, Helwani, do you have to wait until the certificate expires to call Hyatt to ask them for points in return for it? Or could you do it before? You can't do it before. You're going to need to let it expire. It's not 100% guaranteed, but to let it expire, give them a call. Give them a call about a week after because I called two days after and it wasn't in their system that it had expired. So she wasn't able to see that and then offer the points. How about you, Miguel? So we're going to Seoul and Tokyo uh, next month. So I booked the Park Hyatt Seoul um, for the first three nights. So it would be three nights there. But I actually did advanced points booking with Hyatt. And the way I do it is I, I send a Twitter message to the Hyatt concierge team. And they've been great about this. If you give them all the information they need, which is just your name, your member number, the dates you're checking in and out, the exact room type, the number of adults and kids. And the, for the kids, they'll need the age. They'll be able to do that for you. And you know, sometimes I get the email about my reservation before they even reply on Twitter. That's how good they are. So I've never really used the my Hyatt concierge. So I just stick to Twitter because that's what works for me. In Tokyo, we're staying at the Ritz Carlton, but I had already booked that a few months ago. But so we're doing three nights at the Park Hyatt Seoul and then five nights at the Ritz Carlton Tokyo. So that's what I booked um, this week. Um, what did you book, Nicole? So I love the feature of using the Twitter account to do advanced booking. That's actually what I use to book this reservation. We are going to the Essence Festival in New Orleans the weekend of July 4th. I always wanted to go since last year, didn't happen. And now I'm glad to be able to be going and staying at a Hyatt that we're using points to pay for. So I opened up the Twitter app. I sent a message. I gave them my World of Hyatt account, the dates, the room type, similar to that. And then they messaged back. One thing I like about this is that there's always a written record of what you requested versus calling on the phone, you're, wait, you're hoping that the transcript is stored somewhere. Because the Essence Fest is such a big music festival, the hotel nights were all non-refundable. And they made that very clear in the Twitter message. They were like, we're, we will book this for you, but just so you know, even if you book with cash or points, this reservation will be non-refundable. Would you like me to go ahead and proceed? So they make things very clear before they make the reservation and you're all right immediately i got the email about my reservation this hotel was also one of the hotels that was on the devaluation list and so i was able to get it before the points requirements increased for this year so mitch what about you my what i booked this week it really isn't about points or travel but it's about a dining reservation that we've had our eye on for some time now and i want to share with you how i actually applied the skills in figuring out travel hacking patterns to book this reservation so i'm not sure if you guys have seen the tv show on netflix chef's table that got a pizza version of it as well and the show's fantastic and they do this episode about this chef in Kyoto. Anyway, we got a trip planned to Thailand and Japan this summer, and we're going to head on down to Kyoto. And we saw this episode with chef Yoshihiro Imai, and we fell in love with him and his restaurant. So I started looking for these reservations. This is actually probably one of the hardest reservations that I've had to look for. I started by doing some digging around Instagram and Google, and I came across his Instagram account, which led me to his website. And and that's where I saw you book the reservations. As I was going through, there was nothing available, which, you know, to be honest, that really didn't surprise me. So at this point, I pulled from my travel hacking knowledge and I started looking for patterns on the booking website. So I found out that each day at exactly noon in Japan time, which is eight o'clock for me on the West Coast, they open the site and it's got extremely limited slots. So over the next couple of days, I tested to see if the pattern continues. Now it opens exactly 60 days out from the date of the reservation. And we only had one shot at getting the exact time slot that we wanted. So with a little luck, some fast Wi-Fi, I was able to make the booking and we are now set for our dining experience with Chef Yoshihiro Imai. And we're going to have the best pizza of our lives in Kyoto. So there you got it. If you apply a little bit of travel hacking knowledge to your life, you can pretty much make anything you want happen. You just got to figure out those patterns, Serena. It's all about patterns, right? It's all about patterns. Um, I can't wait to see you and your content 
of you eating at this restaurant. And you know, Mitch, I know you like monkeys. In Kyoto, <laughs> after you eat your eat at this restaurant, make sure you go to Monkey Park because it was a fun experience hanging out with the monkeys there. Hold on, I'm making a note now. Monkey Park, <laughs> Kyoto. I got it. All right, totally worth it. Totally <laughs> worth it. So I want to talk about a booking that I did and it's my favorite American Airlines Sweet Spot Award. And that is from the West Coast to the Caribbean for only 10,000 miles in economy one way. So I booked an award ticket using AA miles on American Airlines from Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic, coming back home to San Francisco for 10,000 miles. And I'll have a layover at JFK. I'm choosing an overnight layover because it's just easier for my family to break up that trip. But that's a total of 10 plus hours on a plane for only 10,000 miles per person. And if you open that AA Aviator Red card that Miguel talked about last week, that means you have some easy AA miles coming to you. So if you're on the West Coast and you're interested in going to the Caribbean, this is a nice award to look at. Sounds like a fantastic award. I agree with you on that, Serena. Did we make some good bookings or did we make some good bookings? We did. All right. Thanks, everyone. That's some great redemptions this week. Now it's time to move on to Ask Us. Hi, I'm Rosie. Hi, I'm Roger. We're both from New York City. We love our show. One of the things that stands out to us is the amazing diversity in your team. We were wondering if you experienced any roadblocks, discriminations, or prejudices during your travels or while using your travel hacks. Looking forward to hearing about your experiences. We definitely are. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Rosie and Roger. First, we want to thank you for acknowledging and recognizing the diversity of our show. That's something that we are very proud of, and we work really, really hard to share our points of view from those perspectives. So thank you for that. So I'm sure most of you have experienced in your travels and travel hacking, the world's not really equal wherever we go. So Serena, what do you want to share? So Mitch, you're right. The world isn't equal and the world needs to do something about it because there are many cases where there's a lot of inequity and inequality. So I know of someone, he is black. He had a Lufthansa first class flight that he was going on. He entered the first class terminal and immediately they directed him to economy, just assuming that he wasn't where he belonged. Same person, he was in Bora Bora with his family. They were dining at a restaurant and the servers took care of everyone else except for them. And so they were sitting there waiting to be waited on. So examples like that are make me sad to hear that stuff like that goes on in the world. So coincidentally, I also have a story about the Lufthansa first class terminal. I guess the most common thing that I face is, and I guess I just get used to it because it happens so often that I don't really see it as a problem just because I'm like, that's just how it is. But, you know, it's very common for me to be in line at the premier access line for an airline to check in and for them to tell me, hey, this is a first class line or the premier access line or whatever they call it. And I'm like, yeah, I know, <laughs> you know, I know where I am. But at the Lufthansa first class terminal, when I went there, I flew with my parents, Lufthansa first class from Frankfurt to Chicago a couple years ago. And the staff was okay, but the patrons that were there, you know, we look different than everybody else. You know, they gave us these looks that you could just tell, like, what are they doing here? Like, they don't belong here. You know, only to end up sitting right next to us in the first class cabin. And like midway through our flight, once we got our caviar and stuff, the guy that was had given us the dirty looks, like looks over and like nods, like in acceptance, at, at, you know, finally or something. I was just like, okay, whatever. I never really cared, you know? But then the other time that I flew Lufthansa first class, I was with my uncle. And so we flew from Stuttgart to Frankfurt. We connected there. So that was European business class. And, we, you know, we were sitting up there and again, people looking at us like, why are they sitting in the same section? But what I love about this part is that they, I don't know what their itineraries were, but ours was, we were going to connect there to do first class back to the U.S. So we get off the plane and there's a Porsche there waiting to pick me and my uncle up and they had to get in a shuttle with like the rest of the passengers. And we went in the Porsche and went to the first class terminal. So that was, that was kind of cool, I guess. <laughs> so that's kind of some of my experiences. Um, but what about you, Nicole? So I would say... 
most of all, I experienced the inequalities more here traveling in the U.S. than overseas. Being raised in Jamaica and compared to my husband who's raised here in the U.S., he's a little bit more sensitive to it than I am because I'm not used to looking out for some of the same things that he's used to. But I feel looked on more here than when I go abroad. When I go abroad, I think people are more looking at me out of curiosity. I think especially with my hair, they're not used to seeing this type of hairstyle and sometimes my accent. So when we went to Colombia, which is funny because Colombia has a really large black population. We were in Cartagena in the coast. We were looked at, but like almost in amazement. I remember one kid came up to us and I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with like the Black Panther movie, but he was just like, every time he saw us, he was like, oh my God, Wakanda forever. But like in a more welcoming way. When we went to Costa Rica, there was this guy that was following us around in the town and he was like, are you guys from the coast? Because there's the Pacific side and the Caribbean side. So there were not a lot of people that had the, the dark skin that we had in the Pacific side. So I feel like abroad, I get more curiosity than anything. And so even in our last trip to DC, and DC is very diversified. I remember asking someone at the counter for something at the hotel and he needed to see my room card to give me a bottle of water. And I'm looking around and I noticed they're not asking anybody else for their room card. But when he gave it, when I showed him the room card, he was like, okay, fine. But it wasn't like he wrote down my room number or anything like that. He just wasn't sure. Are you supposed to be staying at the Park Hyatt? You know, kind of thing. But like Miguel says, it's Kind of like you get used to it, but you don't want to get used to it, but you're aware that it's there. So we haven't done a business class or a first class flight yet. And I like to be super petty. So when I get the stairs, I stare back. When people make little snarky comments, I make snarkier comments back. So I'm already prepping for the stairs in our Q suite or something else. So I'll be happy to report back. How about you, Kehalani? Things that I can connect with the different things that you're saying. I have um, three examples from three different places. One, two is, one is in the mainland in the U.S. The other is in Hawaii, where I'm from, and I'm also Hawaiian. And the third is in Tahiti. So when we go to different places, like if we are in a hotel, this experience in Hawaii happened in a five-star hotel in Waialea. It was not a high end brand either. When we are at hotels in Maui, that these hotels run like a thousand to two thousand dollars a night. You don't see many local families there because it's really expensive to go there and many people don't know how to use points to pay for it. So we kind of stand out against all the tourists that are there. So at the hotel in Wailea, I did not know my room number because we had just checked in that night and I was harassed by one of the guards that night where it got down to on his mic on his shoulder saying, I need backup, I need backup. I just started chucking it back to the lobby where I knew there was a local guy who was working the ballet. And this security guard was chasing me going, I need backup, I need backup. And I had my two little dogs and I was running and I was crying and I texting Vic, help, help, because I didn't know what was gonna happen. And all of this was because I didn't know my room number because they usually have people that sneak upon large property at night and it's usually local people. So he didn't think I belong there because of the way I look. Another incident was in Tahiti. So when I go to Tahiti, people speak Tahitian to me because they think I'm Tahitian. And the workers there are really welcoming, but they're having an opening ceremony for this hotel. So the hotel is having a grand opening uh, celebration and they're having it near the pool area. So Vic and I, we're gonna go to the pool. So we are wearing pool clothes, walking through people who are all dressed up. And we got stopped there as, as we're walking through the bar lounge area to get to the pool. Uh, what is your room number, <laughs> this and that. And I was like, oh, and it caught me off guard. And we told it to him, we sat down and that kind of ruined our evening. Even I tried not to let it because we're at the hotel, we're going to the pool. The purpose of the pool is to go to it and we're wearing pool clothes. But we were picked out because of not looking like we belong there for that party or just not looking like we belong at the hotel. So I made a complaint. We spoke to a head director, someone who was in charge of the events that night because some big wigs were in and he apologized. He gave us a free free meal, some free 
food um, while we were dining and just really apologized for that worker. And that worker, he was not Tahitian. He was from somewhere else. Another incident was at a five-star hotel in California. So when we were walking by this gate um, where everybody was going to dinner and people were passing this man who was standing there working. And we had our key card in our hand ready to go through the gate. But we were wearing exercise clothes. We weren't, again, we weren't dressed like everybody that was there. And so he literally like went out of the way and turned around and said, do you know where you're going? Do you need help? And I was like, that kind of caught me off guard, but I was ready. You know, I had a little bit of Nicole in me at the time. And I held up my key card. And I was like, yeah, we know where we're going. <laughs> and we continued on and I just was like, ooh. <laughs> and I ignored him. And walking back, we were ready to check out that evening. And I was just so upset again because inside my heart, I'm thinking, this happens to people all the time who look different. And that's something that I love about having status is the ability that the hotel will listen to people that have status. And that's one of the main reasons why I say something because I don't want it to happen to anybody else. And I want the hotel to know that some of the workers judge people on the way that they look and it's really not acceptable. It's really important to speak out, let the hotel know because one person's opinion that works there isn't exactly the entire staff's opinion. And the manager needs to know what's happening because we don't want it to happen to anybody else as well. It could happen to somebody that's really old who can't speak up for themselves either. So, Yeah, great point. How about you, Mitch? So being in a same-sex and biracial relationship, the difficulty, you know, it has challenges, and especially in the traveling world. Our experience goes back a few years ago as we were traveling business class, and I'm not going to name the airline, and I'm not going to name the country either. Polrit and I, all we've ever known in our lives is the love of travel. So we're very comfortable in airports and those types of surroundings. So as we go about the airport, we'll usually sometimes kind of go our own ways a little bit. And this trip, it was no different than that, pretty much. We left the lounge. We were headed to the gate of the plane, and I was a bit behind him. And as I was walking up to the gate, I see the gate agent has got him by the wrist, pretty much dragging him to the coach class boarding line. And before I could even say anything or I could even figure out what was going on, they're then grabbing me without even looking at my ticket or my passport. And they're escorting me to the front of the business class line within that same time frame. And Polrit, he breaks free, he comes over to me and he begins to tell me exactly what has happened with this gate agent. And she didn't even look or assume he was in business class, took him by the wrist, moved him to the coach line. He tried to show them his ticket and they wouldn't even look at his boarding pass. And I was appalled that this had happened and it had happened so fast it was hard for me to even really grasp what was going on at all so we got it all sorted out then we get to the gate i'm not sure if my approach to this was the right one and you know i say that because for me as a gay man in a questionable country who they are not really known for being very accepting of the LGBTQ plus community. And I really wanted us to get home anyway. And I didn't want to get a denied boarding for us to get on the plane. So my thought process is, you know, the gatekeepers, they've got all the power at this point. So my approach to these types of situations, it's very different. I take a very passive approach as in do whatever you want. I'm going to write emails and I'm going to complain later. And pull it, he's more of a deal with it in the moment type of person, which, you know, after 18 years of a relationship, that can still prove a very difficult thing to work on in your relationship. So that moment, it was one of the first times I've actually been able to see and feel firsthand what he's been articulating to me about these experiences and kind of what you've shared tonight as well with these different racial biases. And you know, I'll never know how often it happens to him, but it was a really eye opening moment for me to see, yeah, racial bias, it's a real thing and it does happen in travel. And seeing this directly through your spouse's perspective, it's a very different thing to process and try to understand. So it's just one of those things that, you know, I don't know what the right answer is, but I think it's kind of what Serena said is they need to try harder and they need to call these things out. Yeah, I agree with Kehalani. It's it's important to speak up, whether you're going to do it in a passive way and send emails and notify everyone of what happened, or you're going to act in the moment. But it's very important to 
voice your opinion and your displeasure. It's important to speak and whether you're, you know, you take the approach that I kind of do the passive approach or you deal with it in the moment, it's important that we speak up and we share these experiences. So, um, Thank you, everyone here, for sharing. And thank you, Rosie and Roger, for sending us your question and asking that as well. If you'd like to ask a question or join in on the show, drop us a line on any of our social media channels, or you can email us at let's get to the points at gmail.com, and we'll feature your question right here. Before we wrap up, we recently did an Instagram story asking for your questions that you want our experts to answer. For those of you watching on Spotify and YouTube, we're going to put the questions on the screen and then we're going to go around and each of us are going to give our best short, quick response. And I guarantee you, none of us have seen these questions before we read them. Okay, here we go. D Soul 5 wants to know what is the advantage of the Chase Sapphire Reserve versus the Chase Sapphire Preferred and how long after you are able to upgrade to the Chase Sapphire Reserve? Miguel. I see the Ch Sapphire Reserve as a $250 annual fee card because the $300 credit is so easy to use that it's automatic that for the extra, what is it, $45 or $55 over the preferred, it's worth it for the priority pass. And actually, that's one of the few cards that has a restaurant included. So I actually used this last week at the airport in Denver to get some uh, $56 in food. Uh, so I think it's a no-brainer. You should wait at least a year if you do have the preferred uh, to, to upgrade to the reserve. What do you think, Nicole? Hmm. I, I almost, I was going to change my answer. I almost thought it wasn't worth it. But here you're doing the math on it. I'm like, maybe I could because I'm like, I never subtracted the 300. I just saw the $550 sticker ticket, but mathematically it does make sense, especially if you travel a lot and you're going to use the restaurant and you're going to use the restaurant benefit. Yes. Also, when you transfer to the travel portal, you get a 25% bump in the value. So hmm, I want to rethink my answer. I'm going to be like, I'm on the fence. I think maybe if the 250 is not a big deal for you, definitely go for it. How about you, Kehalani? It has a better insurance. Um, the insurance policy, um, it's like a, a, in general, it's less amount of hours in order to get that reward of the insurance. Serena. So I'm going to take that 250 further and say you're net $70 actually, because there's an Instacart credit on the Sapphire Reserve, which I use. So that's $15 a month Instacart credit every month. I use it and I think it's helpful. And so you're talking net $70 after you use those credits, which ends up being cheaper than the preferred. So I go with CSR. And I also like, I also like the insurance benefits and I hear great things about claims and um, resolutions from claims too, which gives me comfort in using that card. You, Mitch? I agree with all the above. I agree with all you. And I kind of go back to what Miguel was saying. It's all about that priority pass and being able to use those restaurants as opposed to the Amex priority pass. And, you know, using the GoPuff credits too, why not? Added incentive, right? All right, next Instagram question, Winnie Verdi Floor. She asks, what are your favorite tools, apps that you guys use for booking award flights? Miguel. So I'm going to go with Seats.Aero for flights. I also like SeatSpy, and I use them for different types of searches. SeatSpy, Seats.Aero, and I like for hotels, Aways with a Z. Um, that's it for now. Nicole? I agree with the seats dot arrow. I can never thank you enough, Miguel, for that tip. And for award stays, I like stay with points and always. How about you, Kehlani? The tool that I am interested in is seats dot arrow. I might subscribe to the pro version, still thinking about it. And for hotels, it's away and also stay with points. How about you, Serena? I'm cheap. So I like the free options. So I use Point Me through the Bill app, which is free. I also use Aeroplan because Aeroplan has like 50 plus partners. And so you're getting really good coverage when you search through Aeroplan. And then for hotels right now, I'm using Max My Point to set alerts for Conrad Bora Bora. So I will keep everyone posted on that. Okay, guys, final Instagram question here. The Travel Points dad sent it to us. He wants us to share how the five of us got together. Great question. Who's going to answer? So I, I got a message answer. from. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, you guys go first. <laughs> no, I got a message from Serena. So I, I'll 
message from Serena. I have too. the same answer. I got a message from <laughs> Serena. <laughs> I'll start. So I've always wanted to do like a podcast video blog like this, and I've wanted to do it for quite some time. So Serena and I, you know, she's, I don't know. She was there. I reached out to her and she said, yes, there you go. That's how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much the story, right? I mean, that's that's just how it went. And then Serena slid into my DMs and invited me in. That's my part. <laughs> right, I got the same same email. Copy paste, maybe. <laughs> so it, I, I think this all started with um, Kehelani. She introduced me to seat to a suite, and she sends me a reel from you, Mitch, and. I'm blown away by by your video editing, your your reels and your content. And and Kehilani, you and I were talking about how this guy needs to be on TV, right? I started engaging with your content, Mitch, and I'm so glad I did because you brought this up with me and I couldn't believe it. I you were telling me about having a show and um, you pitched me the whole thing and I was just blown away. And then I realized, wait a minute, are you asking me to be one of the five? Then it was up to us to form a team. And I, it was important to me that we have a diverse team because it's unlike anything out there right now. And it was also important to have fun people and people that I enjoy talking to. I think if I enjoy talking to them, I think viewers will enjoy listening to them. <laughs> <laughs> So then collectively, we just reached out to um, everyone else, and here we are. Yeah, and here we are five shows later. Can you believe it? Wow. Yeah. Five of five. Here we are. <laughs> I DM with uh, Serena, Miguel, and Nicole, like, almost every day prior to this. So now it's easier for us because all our chats are just all in one. So we're actually saving ourselves yeah. some time. It is easier. Efficiency. You are correct. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I just want to say how lucky and fortunate I am to have all of you here with me doing this show. And the four of you are exactly what I needed in my life. So thank you so much for doing this show with me. I couldn't do it without you four. So thank you. Thank well, you. None for of the your four idea. of us could do it without you, Mitch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> thank you, Mitch. Uh, <laughs> Okay, thanks you all. That was a lot of fun. We're going to do it again. We're going to do another Instagram poll as well. So look for those questions soon. That's all for now. I want to thank our hosts tonight. I want to thank Serena from Passion for Points. Bye, everyone. Kay Halani from Points to Travel Expert. Miguel from The Travel Sergeant. Nicole from Nicole's Travel Tips. And I'm Mitch Shannon from c 2 s Suite. Remember to like and subscribe to this audio and video podcast wherever you find us on social media. That's it for now. Please look for our next show soon. Thanks for watching.